Dear friends, now we are finally ready to address the most interesting and important integrals in our course. Those are the integrals containing multivalent functions. They are in fact the most widespread integrals in theoretical physics or engineering fields. While mastering the technique, you will find out why we spend so much time studying so meticulously the theory of multivalent functions and regular branches. You may also find the topic a bit challenging. But believe me, once you get a good command of it, you will be able to read research papers or physics books way more easily. So let's just jump right on it. And here is our first example of this integral. So from negative 1 to 1, dx divided by the cubic root of 1 minus x times 1 plus x squared. As you clearly see, the integrand contains a cubic root, that is, a multivalent function. Let's denote it as f of z. It has two branch points, z equals negative 1 and z equals 1. The integral is real. As we see, as x changes from negative 1 to 1, the cubic root stays positive. That means that the cubic root assumes its arithmetic values as x belongs to the segment from negative 1 to 1. We are going to use a complex analysis. That means we will need the properties of this multivalent function in the entire complex plane. To make it single valued, we need to draw a branch cut of branch cuts. But there are many possibilities to draw branch cuts for the function containing two branch points. For example, we can draw two semi-infinite branch cuts starting at each branch point like this. Or we can draw a single branch cut connected to branch points from negative 1 to 1. So which one to choose? And here comes the first general rule of computing the integral containing multivalent function. If you want to compute an integral using complex analysis, you should always try to draw a branch cut in such a way that it coincides with the contour, if it's possible at all. We will elaborate on this in the future, but now just take it as a thumb rule. Here, miraculously, the endpoints of our contour coincide with the branch point of our multivalent function. So we can draw a branch cut from negative 1 to 1. So the desired goal is achieved. Our branch cut coincides with the integration contour. But now we have a potential problem connected to all finite branch cuts. Namely, we have to make sure that our multivalent function defined by such branch cut stays single valued. There are two possible ways to check it. By far, the easiest one was discussed the last week. That is just to check the asymptotics of our multivalent function at z tending to infinity. So let's check the asymptotics. 1 minus z becomes negative z. 1 plus z is turned into z. Therefore, we have f of z is tending to 1 divided by the cubic root of minus z cubed, which is simply the cubic root of negative 1 times z. Don't let this cubic root confuse you. It's just some number. We don't know yet how to decipher it because the cubic root is triple valued, but what we should really pay attention to is the dependence of our function on z. 
we see that it's just a simple 1 over z dependence. And what that means is that, for example, once we rotate around the large circle around our branch card, the function returns to its original value, that is, it stays single-valued. Therefore, such a branch cut is acceptable, but there is another, I would say, more didactic way to check if the function remains single-valued. Let's briefly cover it. As we mentioned earlier, the only allowed rotation in the complex plane is the one around the branch cut. So let's draw some circle around the branch cut and trace the changes of the arguments of the constituents of our multivalid function. The number 1 minus z is represented by the arrow pointing at point 1. And as we clearly see, it makes a full 2 pi rotation in the counterclockwise direction. The number 1 plus z is represented by the arrow starting at point negative 1. And again, it makes a full 2 pi rotation in the counterclockwise direction. And that means that the full change of the argument under the cubic root is simply given by 2 pi, which comes from 1 minus z, plus 2 times 2 pi, stemming from 1 plus z squared, which gives 6 pi. Minding the cubic root in the denominator, we come to the conclusion that the total change of the argument of our multivalid function f of z is simply negative one third times six pi, which gives us two pi. And here it is. We see, as we make a full rotation, the argument of the function makes a two pi change and the function returns to its original value. So again, the function is single valued. You may wonder, what if the branch cut doesn't make a function single-valued? Then we have a potential problem. Most likely, it means that the integral can't be computed with the methods we are discussing right now. But don't worry, such kind of integrals are still the most widespread in applications, so we are still getting a very powerful technique. This is not all, however. We still have two more issues to discuss. The first one is that we still haven't fixed the regular branch of our multivalid function. And the second one is, at the moment, our integration contour runs right inside the branch cut. Those are two closely related things. The integration contour can't write inside the branch cut, because the multivalid function is ill-defined inside the branch cut, as was discussed last week. So we have two options. Either we understand the integral as the one taking along the contour slightly, above the branch cut or slightly below. For the computation of the integral, a particular choice doesn't make any difference, and we'll see it quite soon. So for the moment, we'll choose our integration contour running slightly above the branch cut, like this. But pay attention to what we've just done. By equalizing this contour integral to the initial one, we imply that our cubic root assumes its arithmetic values at all the points on the upper bank of our branch cut. This is essentially the fixation of the regular branch of our multivalid function. So this is the rigorous condition. f of x plus i0 stays positive if x belongs to the segment from negative 1 to 1. Thus, we rewrite our initial integral the new contour one from negative 1 to 1 f of x plus i0 dx and here is the end point of our slide we started with the real valued integral and transformed it into a contour integral with correctly defined multivalued function